Hello there and welcome to Complete Games. I'm James and this is Valheim and we continue. This time round we're going to be making our first Viking vessel and setting off on our maiden voyage. We've also got a location for the second boss in the game, the Eldar, so we're going to be making our way in that direction. Before we get started I'll just show you our skills and how the character's been progressing. Bows were at 41 points and axes we have 33 points so they're the main weapons we've been using. As you can see, defense-wise, we're now at 26, and we've managed to get all of the troll armor up to a level 2. And I quite like the troll armor. If you've got a complete set, it gives you the sneak buff as well. As well, inside, I've made a few upgrades. We've got some trophy stands just over here. But more importantly, our cooking station has improved, and I've put the cauldron down. Just here, we can see we've got this fermenter, and I think it's ready just been fermenting some healing brews there we go so we've just got six minor healing brews and to make these you need to craft them in the cauldron first so I'll just go over some of the things that it does so just in the bottom here you can see I've got my meads made up it's one here base mead of tasty let's try the stamina brew as well so we need to put that in there it's going to take a couple of days to ferment and we'll have some stamina brews there we're just coming over to the cauldron, you can see what recipes I've got access to. The carrot soup, which is quite a good buff for our character. These are all the meads that we could craft. And, of course, the queen of jams as well. That is uh, quite a good recipe to make as well. So we'll be taking some of these along with us and improve foods, just giving us a better health rating. So that combined with some meat as well. As you can see, our health bar has gone up considerably to what it was. And I'll definitely be taking these healing brews with us as well. We've also made an upgrade over here. We've got the forge cooler down. And we've also put another upgrade down on the smithy just out on the outside here. We've got the a daze. Just put that just out the side here. So we've got a level 4 crafting bench. Looks like all our carrot seeds are ready. So I'm just going to grab these. So for each wild carrot that we replant, we get three seeds back. So we've got enough carrots here for days. I'm just going to go and replant them. So you only need a couple of carrot seeds to get started. And so far I've only experimented with growing the carrots. I'll have to experiment with more farming in the future. But yeah, we've got plenty of seeds back there, so we'll just plant a load of carrots in. Space them out about three apart, I guess, just here. And we'll have plenty of carrots when we come back. Okay, so that's more than enough carrots, I'm sure, for one person. Of course, we've also got our beehives here. I think four has actually been plenty for one player. That's producing plenty enough honey for us. So I wanted to craft the Viking boat, and of course, we can't have a boat without somewhere to moor it in a harbour. So I was going to come down here and just build a bit of a jetty or something just at the end here. Ooh, just get rid of this neck. See you later. The necks are actually quite good for meat and uh, cooking. They give you quite a good buff back. They're not that hard to catch. So yeah, I was thinking if I just put a jetty out here for our boat, got to have somewhere to moor it and perhaps level up this train a little bit. Okay, so it's been a minute since I last picked up Valheim, but I kind of got lost in building this jetty. It kind of turned into a little bit of a harbour. And, of course, because the weather came in, I had to put a roof over the top of it. So, it's something I've just got started just down here. And if I just show you at the end here. Yeah, I quite like it. I'm going to elaborate a little bit more on it. It's nothing special. It was quite easy to build. I'm sure you can follow along yourself. But as you'll see here, we need to repair the wood that gets exposed to the elements. And I guess it does degrade over time. But it'd be good if the developers added something so we can have exposed wood on the outside. Because otherwise it just kind of weathers away pretty quickly. Still, I'll keep on top of it. And I'm just going to put this crafting station down here. Because of course, when we bring our boat in, we will need to repair it as well. So we need to be close to a crafting station to do that. But I'm sure in an update the developers are going to address this because... As cool as it is having the degradation on the wood, 
it'd be cool if we could just put some varnish down or something or just some way of being able to protect exposed wood otherwise it just ends up going just like this building over here as you can see has this green effect on it and need to repair it so unfortunately the jetty will need repairing quite often but I don't think it destroys it it just keeps on going down over time I mean that little shack has been sat there since I moved in and it's still there so it's just something we'll have to keep an eye on and I've roofed the majority of it so before we set off I just want to put our first portal down this takes a couple of certling cores some fine wood and ten grey dwarf eyes just going to shove it up at the back here I don't think it will take damage to weather but I'll keep an eye on it so we'll just put one down here and we need to give it a name and when we put another one down at our destination we give it the same name and then they'll be linked so we'll call this Eldar and I'll just dismiss Hugging just explaining about what the portal does so I'll just put this wood away don't need to be carrying that with us but I'll keep the fine wood as it might be a little bit more awkward to find an oak tree or some more fine wood out there when we get there so we don't need to be carrying this stuff it's just extra weight um, I've got a couple of certling cores I've got enough grey dwarf eyes to be able to set up another portal when we get there and I'll just put that deer hide away so our, no just checking our brood's not ready um, if we just grab some queen of jams just grab a couple of these we want to take our best food with us give ourselves the best opportunity of defeating this boss now it is quite a distance that we're going to have to travel and I've just had a little spin round on the viking boat it's a little bit awkward but I think I'm getting the hang of it um, he says as he can't get into the boat <laughs> where's the ladder? there's a ladder on the side here somewhere he can't jump here we go ok so we'll just back it out and unfortunately if you can see on the right hand side the wind's actually against us so we need to be heading into the wind and I'm not to believe that the best way to do that is actually with the sails totally up. Let's just see if we can get a little bit of momentum going forward with the wind kind of blowing on the side. So it's probably going to take us a little bit of time just to get away from this area. And we've only got a little bit of wind like this course directly traveling into the wind but this is the way we need to go wonder if we can eventually unlock an ability that can change the angle of the weather that would be pretty cool of course it would affect everybody else so maybe not but yeah I think if we just completely bring the sail up this is the maximum speed that we can pretty much go at the moment with the wind directly in front of us Okay, we're finally out on the open seas. Okay, well it's certainly a little bit choppy now. I thought I almost capsized the boat before because some of these waves are getting quite big. And we are pretty far away from land in both directions. So this is quite awkward. At least the wind is now behind us. In fact, we're going maximum pace as we can. Yeah, we're just heading towards the Eldar. And I can't see land anywhere, so we're right out in the center of the ocean at the moment. I love this. This is great. Okay, you can see some trees there, but that doesn't look like Black Forest to me. In fact, that looks more like a swamp biome. And I don't think we really want to be messing about in there just yet. And, oh no, what's that? Oh no. That doesn't look good. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's definitely spotted us. So that's a Leviathan. Um, I guess we've got no choice. We're going to have to head towards the swamp because this thing's going to attack us. Oh no. 
come on, give us a break. It's my first boat. Okay, so we're just I'm just gonna try and get as close as I can to the, the swamp. I mean if it destroys this boat, we're just gonna have to risk it. Risk it for a chocolate biscuit. So come on, leave me alone. I'm not doing anything to you. <laughs> okay. Well, I do know that if you can actually catch and kill these leviathans, they give you back some really good items for cooking. So, but we're a long way away from being able to hunt leviathans. And, oh dear, yeah, the swamp, we don't want to be going in there. Looks like I can see some ghosts and things. Oh dear. Come on, if we can get close enough, maybe this leviathan will just bug off. Let's see, I might have to moor it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And I think that leviathan has gone away. Unfortunately, the wind is right in front of us again. But yeah, I can't see it. Okay, let's just go a bit further up this way. See what's here. Okay, well, I can see some meadow. So, if nothing else, I could pull up there, right next to the swamp. But I'm wondering if we can go round the back of it. We've now finally got the wind behind us. I can actually steer this in the straight line. I'm going to try and get round the back of this meadow. Yeah, just as I thought. Okay, so we've got some black forest just here. And I've just come round all around the back. This has actually taken us quite a long way to journey this way. I think I've been out in the ocean for <laughs> at least 45 minutes. But I can see the Eldar is just on this side. And we've just come round the back of this little island. And I think I see a little bit of a castle over there. So that might do us as a little makeshift base. So let's just moor up right in front of us here. Yeah, and you can see that stone building just there. I think I might take that over. Let's get a bed down in there and get this portal in there. Okay. Is there anything in here? Yeah, it looks like there's a few skeletons here. Hopefully they'll come out. Better get some food. Just in case we get hit. Okay. Okay, well, the portal works. And I've managed to grab the ancient seeds from the base. Because we're going to need them to summon the Eldar. So I knew we would need something. And it just said on the sign that it requires the sacrifice of its young and if you just hover over the top of the ancient seeds it says you can hear tiny voices so I'm pretty sure that's the tribute that we're going to have to offer in order to summon the Eldar. So it's just over the top here and oh, looks like we've got a dungeon here. Okay, let's just get rid of these skellies and I'll probably mark that down on the map as well. I do like the arrow. Probably a little bit overpowered. Not as overpowered as the shield, though. Okay. So, I'll mark this one down. I've actually got plenty of circling calls at the moment, but dungeons are always good for treasure. Nice dodge. So, I won't head in here just yet. I will mark it on the map. So, as you can see, the line there where we've journeyed. And, yeah, it was definitely a better choice to come around the back, I feel. Didn't want to have to go through the swamp in order to get here. So, I'll mark that down as a dungeon. I'll come back and grab that later. I'm actually doing alright at the moment for the settling cores, though. 
Okay, so it looks like we've got a grayling spawner just over the top here. I might want to get rid of that. And try and get rid of any of the bad guys around this boss area. We don't want them joining the fight. We have to destroy this to stop them from spawning. Doesn't look like anything's guarding it. Oh, no, there's a shaman just here. Didn't see that. And I'm out of that stamina. Got one more. Oh. There we go. Probably a little bit risky attacking it like that. It's just the one though. Okay. So it's just over in this direction. Just want to check. There's no trolls or anything skulking around. They look pretty clear though. There's a couple of Greylins over here. So I want to make sure all of these are gone. We don't want them joining in the fight. Okay. And I'm going through quite a bit of resin. So I do like the fire arrows at the minute. So I'll keep picking these up. Okay, so these are the ancient seeds. Now I'm pretty sure it's ancient seeds it wants. It said sacrifice its young. And uh, when you hover over the ancient seed, it says you can hear tiny voices. So I'm pretty sure that this is the trophy we need to offer. Okay, looks like there's a building just here. Just check around here. Oh yeah, look, a couple of them here. So, oh, more than a couple. Oh, a few, and a shaman. Oh, they're all coming in now. I thought we was in trouble for a second there. I'm taking a couple of hits, I do need to be a little bit more careful than that. But yeah, last thing we want is that mob coming in on us. Got a chest here, what we got? A few feathers, yeah, we'll take all of that. A couple of extra arrows as well. And I'll just take a healing brew. Well, I think we're pretty clear. Can't see anything else that's going to be able to get in here, so let's go for it. I'm going to switch to fire arrows as well. Do a little bit of damage over time. And see if it's the seeds. Yep, there we go. So three seeds it takes. Don't know how many it would take, but where's it going to appear? There it is. Okay. So, mm, a little bit of damage there. Ooh. Okay. Just stay behind these pillars. So, I've got a level 4 fine bow and the fire arrows. They seem to be doing okay. these pillars. Don't get hit by that. Ooh. Like that. Okay. Just got a 40 second cooldown on the potion because I did take a hit there. Okay, just run around this side. As you can see it's summoning stuff out of the ground. It's Just keeping behind these pillars here. Seems to be doing the trick. Can't seem to get me here. Okay. Alright, let's move to another corner. Oh, just got hit. Okay. Just keep moving and keep using this as cover. way off. Where are you shooting? Okay. I really need to turn the screen shake off. Must have reset. Sorry if everything's a bit shaky. Okay. Get a couple more shots in there. Okay. 
doing pretty well here. So you just stay there. Oh. All right, let's get out of there. Summon some more roots. Okay. Okay, yeah, so you'll pretty much stay behind the pillars here. Find... I don't know if it feels like a little bit of an exploit, but... Of course, it's still in early access. They can change this, but I kind of feel that these pillars... It should probably be able to destroy them. So that your cover is blown, because... Otherwise, you naturally just want to go to each corner and fire. So that ability can pretty much take out trees and the big stones and rocks, but as long as you're behind one of these pillars, you're completely safe from it. So, yeah, I think just, just changing that so that these pillars could be knocked down would make this a little bit harder. Now... It's taken a lot more shots than the deer did. Certainly a lot more tanky. But... Despite of that... Yeah. Okay. So that's the Eldar defeated. Fantastic. So we'll get the head. And that's the second boss down. I'm not sure what else we'll get from this. Should get... There we go. We got the swamp key. So now, of course, we know where the swamp biome is. But when we head out in there, we will be able to gather stuff from the crypts. So that's the next type of dungeon that we can explore. Okay. So, as you can see, its ability here was destroying everything. But then four pillars... Yeah, I kind of feel that if they were also made to be knocked down, that that fight might be a little bit more rewarding. I'd still recommend going over with at least a level 4 bow like myself, though, because it did take quite a few shots to take it down. So the Swamp Key. So we're now going to be able to take on the crypts in the Swamp. So in the next episode, I definitely want to be heading out in that direction. Uh, we also need to find the trader as well, so there's certainly a lot more exploration to be done. And uh, I'd like to find the trader if I can. I know that it's likely to be in the Black Forest biome, so we definitely need to do some more exploration. Looks like there was a large copper vein back there as well to harvest, so that's quite good. It's just near this little base here. But let's get back and we'll offer the head of the Eldar to the stones at the beginning. So here we are back at the start of the game and where we spawned in. We've now got the head of the Eldar to offer this stone. So let's get this hung up here. So that's the second Forsaken defeated. And we've also got a new power now. So faster wood cutting. Okay, let's activate that and give that a test run before we get away here. Let's just see how effective this is. So, in fact, this would be really quite handy, I would suspect. Gathering quite a bit of wood. But let's see how quick we can now demolish a forest with this ability. Okay, so it will be on a cooldown. Let's just activate it. Okay, so a 20 minute cooldown. Okay, but then it's like literally just two hits to chop a tree down. That's great. Oh, wow. Could it actually demolish a forest with this ability. This is fantastic. And it gets rid of the stumps as well. <laughs> Just have to watch out that we don't get crushed by the trees here. Look at this. <laughs> Just annihilates a forest. I like that ability. That's great. That's going to be making gathering wood a lot easier moving forward. Let's well grab it. Look at that couple of hits and we've got a tree down but that's about it for this episode of complete Valheim I think next time we're going to be heading out to the swamp biome and I'm also going to be doing a little bit of exploration we need to find that trader but until next time I'm James from complete games and I'll see you